How do you make a packed lunch if you can't make a sandwich? How do you explain to a child that they can no longer have bread and jam for tea? How many people in the audience here are gluten intolerant? Yep, I thought there might be a few of you. Today, I'm going to tell you a story how I made sure my gluten intolerant son could enjoy bread, and how, from my kitchen table, I built a business that exports to 10 countries around the world, turns over more than 30 million a year, and started a new, fresh, free from retail category. But before I do that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about gluten. And you have a picture here of what it looks like. It's a protein found in foods containing wheat, rye, and barley, such as cakes, biscuits, and bread, pizza and pasta, and even soy sauce. People who have to live without gluten, when they eat it, they become bloated, fatigued, they get diarrhea, and in worst cases, they, get, they, they struggle with severe weight loss. It really impacts their health. In my three-year-old son's case, he was tiny and wasting away in front of our eyes. It was quite clear that when he ate anything with gluten in, he started to get a terribly sore tummy and would lie on the chair. And we were really, really worried about him. So we went to see the doctor, and the doctor asked us to remove gluten from his diet. Within a week, he no longer felt sick. I think he'd felt sick from the moment I weaned him. Within a month, he was gaining weight, and he was running around like a healthy little boy again. We were so delighted that he was feeling so much better. But I was really struggling to find a decent loaf of fresh, soft, gluten-free bread in the stores. It didn't seem to exist. The bread on the, on the, in the supermarkets at the time was hard, dry, and crumbly, and you had to microwave it or toast it to make it edible. Living without sandwiches was really hard. A picnic in the park became difficult. Traveling became awkward. And parties became very isolating for Robin. As his mum, I refused to make do. I resolved that somehow I was going to come up with a loaf of bread that tasted soft and was perfect for sandwiches. It was going to be a real challenge. And why was that? Well, wheat bread is made with four ingredients, wheat flour, water, salt, and yeast. And when you add the water to the wheat flour, you create an elastic dough that behaves a little bit like bubble gum, filling with bubbles created by the yeast, rising into a lovely risen loaf that's soft and pillowy, and then you bake it in the oven into that lovely, fluffy, open, bubbly texture of bread that we all know and love. In contrast, when I add water to this cornstarch, which is gluten-free, you can see that I make soup. There is no structure whatsoever. There is not one single ingredient out there that behaves like wheat flour. There's no direct replacement. In fact, you have to use 20 gluten-free ingredients to imitate the unique character of wheat flour in bread to create that risen loaf. It was going to be a massive challenge to come up with this blend, this magic blend. But somehow, I was driven by a mother's fierce determination to change the situation for my family and for other people struggling like us. I set about blending multiple ingredients from my local health food store together for hours a day, baking thousands of loaves and breaking two ovens in the process in my kitchen at home until one day my children said, wow, mom, that tastes delicious. I needed to hear that wow to know that I'd created something groundbreaking. It was fantastic. My son could now eat bread again. I could make him sandwiches, and life went back to normal. Except for one thing. Making bread takes four hours from start to finish, and I desperately wanted to buy the bread in the supermarket like every other mother. So I knew I needed to scale it. Amazingly, just down the road between Glasgow and Edinburgh was the largest gluten-free bakery in the country. It was fate, and they agreed to help me scale it. Turning my Magimix recipe into a scaled product with three small children at home was really quite tough. Trialing took, through, took place through the night. 
um, often then followed by the school run, completely covered in flour. It took a year of intensive trialling to, to, to develop that industrialised loaf that we, were, that we were proud of. And I knew that I would have to keep a really close eye on it for the foreseeable future. I also knew that it had been a huge challenge coming up with the bread in the first place and then scaling it. But it was another class of challenge to turn my home-baked bread into a sustainable business. I knew I needed expert help and I knew I didn't have all the skills. By this stage, I was a gluten-free baker. I was not a marketeer. One day at school, a father politely asked me why I was covered in flour. It was Sybil Gamble, founder and CEO of Cairn Energy, one of Scotland's most successful businesses. He, he was also a celiac and hadn't been able to eat bread for many years, and he asked if he could try the bread. He got back to me really quickly to say, wow, that's delicious, that's going to change my life, and it's going to change the lives of many other people. I'd like to back you and, and help you recruit that team you're looking for. Trying to prove the market opportunity to attract the team was quite difficult because there was no data. Fresh gluten-free bread didn't exist. But actually, my vision to create a range of great-tasting gluten-free bakery products that would normalize the lives of people around the world who, who had to avoid gluten was enough to attract an expert team who wanted to help me turn my vision into reality by first helping me brand the product, that's where the name Genius came from, to, to getting a, a listing in a major retailer while I concentrated on the products. In 2009, Genius Bread launched across the nation. It was the first gluten-free bread on the market. The online gluten-free community went mad. People, for the first time ever, or, or for many years, were able to eat fresh bread and sandwiches again. I could also buy bread in the supermarket with my family. It was a fantastic moment. Within months, we were baking thousands of loaves a week. And our success was both exciting but also problematic. Our customers couldn't always find the bread. They, got, they became frustrated. Apart from Scottish water, our ingredients came from all over the world and didn't always behave consistently. And, and this caused product quality issues. And also, on top of that, people were clamoring for all of the other products that they were missing. What about pancakes? What about crumpets? All of our products take months to develop because every formulation is unique to that product to give our consumers the taste experience that they're looking for. It was a real challenge. And in 2010, as we mastered gluten-free bakery in the UK, we started to get interest from overseas. A baker in Canada got in touch and said, I'd like to manufacture your bread and distribute it across um, the US market. Now, we were really busy at the time, and the, we, we really probably should have politely declined, but actually we decided to be able to take the bread to a market six times greater than the UK it was just a huge opportunity. So we went for it, and I was floored yet again by ingredients behaving inconsistently as I scaled up to launch. Just as the bread gained traction in the market, we, um, we, we had a bit of a problem because our, great, our largest US competitor bought the bakery. We had to pull out. It was a real blow. But actually, by this stage, we'd learned so much about manufacturing ourselves, we decided to become manufacturers. In 2013, Genius transitioned overnight from a product development and marketing company of 20 people to a manufacturing business of 300. To many people, that would be a horrifying thought, but to us, it was a huge relief to be finally in charge of our product quality, our innovation, our IP, and to be able to get our products confidently to our consumers across the world. It's mind-blowing to think that a large export business, easing the lives of millions of people around the world, emerged from my kitchen at home as a result of genuine family need and as a result of the commitment and expertise of everyone that's been on the genius journey with me. It's also interesting that 98% of businesses in Scotland are small. As a nation, we really struggle to scale our businesses. If 1% of the Scottish businesses added £10 million to their turnover, 
they would collectively add 3.6 billion to the Scottish economy. Imagine the impact. I've told you my story today because I wanted to demonstrate that if I can start a business from my kitchen, then there are many company owners here that can do the same thing if they follow three key ingredients. Leave your ego at the door and get a great team around you. Be brave in export and talk to your customers and innovate in line with their needs. Every small business on a mission has the potential to be a global market leader. Thank you.